Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jake Solacy Stuff channel and today we're back with the Zoe HD Drift. We're giving that thing a bit of a break for now while we wait for... That's weird. Anyway, um, so I decided to come back to this and try and see if we can get this finished off. I've written a little list of what I think we have to do left. Radio setup, flight mode setup, the on-screen display setup, the gyro directions, the radio directions for the surfaces, New camera, because I've got that Cad X that didn't go in the Talon, um, which I might install in the front of this if I can be bothered. What are the CFG? We've got to glue the antennas. I know my handwriting's terrible. Uh, or that antenna. And then I've got to glue the receiver antennas and put the prop on. Because I've just taken the prop off because it wasn't all the way on properly. And if I'm messing about with things, I don't want it to suddenly shoot off and decide to hit me in the face. So, yes. Uh, first thing first, of course, is going to be going and getting my laptop so that we can do the um, flight mode first and the radio setup we'll need a laptop for iNav so I'll be back very shortly okay so what I have printed out here old style not like on my iPad or anything is the on-screen display for an FY41 you might be asking why have you got that well I want my iNav to look like Pretty much the rest of my autopilots. So I have this. It has everything labelled. The only thing that isn't labelled on here, which is why I put an orange circle around it, is the centre bit. So let's see if we just go from 12 o'clock and work around. So we've got the compass with uh, heading. I think there are two different options in INAV. You have the flight time and the mileage in metres, which is a bit weird, but that's those two. You have the relative altitude from your start point. So if you're flying really low, you can technically go into minus numbers. And that's like a bar that moves up and down. So the numbers rotate out of the way. So if you were climbing, zero would disappear off the bottom screen. Then 25 and things are coming through the top. Latitude longitude. That's not my latitude and longitude because it's in south east. So that's, yeah, I'm not in the southeast. Or I'm not in the south coordinates. I'm in north. Um... Flight modes, and then this section you have voltage of the battery, how many amps you're pulling at that time for the current sensor, your distance from home, your milliamp hours used, you have airspeed in kilometres an hour, the quantity of satellites, and the GPS altitude. So that's how I'm going to set this up. This is going to have a few more things on it that the FY41 doesn't do. So it's going to have system messages, it's going to have probably going to have the RSSI strength over here somewhere. Um, and a few other things that you can do with this that you can't with uh, the FI-41. So, I'm going to try and swap over to OBS so you can watch the screen recording and we'll take it from here. Right, so, um, hopefully the microphone in the laptop is not awful it didn't seem to be when i did the fy41 stuff for the nano talon not nano talon mini talon 2 talon pro whatever the hell its name is so now the problem that we've got is that the um bar if you like, or the, the the screen if you like is bloody small um so it's not going to be the easiest thing to do so we're looking for compass where that will be zero i Dear heading, that's the degrees. Okay, what about heading graph? Aha, okay. Now, the big problem with this is it's really hard to see whereabouts the middle is. That's too high up. Is that in the middle? I wish it was like a like you can turn a grid on to help your line stuff up with. I can't tell if that's in the middle or not. And it's going to be even harder for you lot to see. Um, so that's the compass done. Before I forget, I'm going to do the middle section. And I'm not sure if I actually said that in the recording or not. Um, but we need a horizon sort of R. Um, like a horizon um, bar and map, I believe, is what we need. So if I have a look for map to begin with. Map up is north, I think is what we want. So there we are, there's the map. I'm 
map. Uh, what's radar? Um, let's have a look. I nav OSD. I nav OSD radar. Oh, it's a friggin' video. God dang it. Oh my god, it looks like a knockoff Joshua Bardwell. Um, oh, I see. One has the home moving, one has the arrow moving. I want the arrow moving, really. It sounds like he's saying rudder mode, but I presume he means radar mode. So I'm going to use radar. Because that I think is what I want. Because the triangle then moves around where the home stays in the middle. That's fine. Um, I also want horizon. Uh, artificial horizon with crosshair in the middle. Um, yes. Again, I wish I could tell where... Oh, you can't move them. Okay, that makes that a lot easier. Horizontal sidebars. Ah, I like them. Pitch angle and roll angle. So the pitch angle and roll angle, fully enough, was a feature in the FY21 that they removed for the 41. Um, it was really good because you could actually tell what angle the plane was at. Um, but no, okay, so we've done that bit. We now we've done a bit at the top, so then we need total flight time, which I have seen on time and flight time. Shows on time while on oh no, on the flight time alarm. I like that, but that wants to be up in the top right, if you please, with mileage, so flight distance. I presume you're looking for. Distance. Distance. GPS. Trip distance. Yep. Next, we want relative altitude. MSL altitude, what's that? Altitude above mean sea level. Um, attitude. Altitude. Yep, I like that being there, that's right. We then want longitude and latitude. Bottom right. Now, both of you, I don't know which is which. I don't know if latitude is left and right, you know, or east south. Um, let me Google that. Lots of Googling today. 
longitude direction. Longitude is east and west. Okay, so longitude. Hang on, let me make sure I got this right. So longitude is. That's, they are actually the right way around. That's good news. I kind of want them a little bit further over to the right because they are only important when the plane goes down, really. Flight mode can be directly in the middle. Fairly sure that was up here. Fly mode, I presume is what it is. Acro. I wish I could rename them to things, you know, like return to launch or whatever. You know what I'm used to. Um, now, if we go down a bit, temperature, G force, timers, current meter. Aha! So, we want, first of all, we want milliamp hours drawn. That go right in the bottom. Right, that's quite important. Then power. What's this? Oh, watts. Be honest with you, couldn't give a flying fuck about watts. Uh, let's turn that off. Not something that interests me in the slightest. To be honest with you, I'm not actually that bothered about battery voltage. Uh, is that further up maybe? Battery voltage. Don't know why it's under general, but there we are. Put that just above. Voltage. Then current amperage. Current draw. Piss. Can go there. I have to fix this again. What an aggravating way of doing things. Just make sure that's recording all right, and it is. Uh, oh, distance from home. Distance from home. Why do I feel like that's under general? Hmm, what I might actually do is um, change it slightly and have battery remaining percentage down here, total distance, and then have distance to home up in the top right. So slightly, well, completely the opposite way around, but. Um, if actually, hmm, I like having all that stuff down there it makes sense. And then total distance and distance to home can go up there. That makes a lot more sense. Um, GPS, distance to home. That can go up there. So the thing is, I actually use distance to home quite a lot um, to make sure that I am heading in the right direction and also it's good for like working out how long you've actually gone for um, GPS altitude ah MSL altitude it does exist that makes a lot of sense we can drag that a little bit there and then we want satellite GPS satellites is that shows no GPS satellites Satellites? Oh, for friggin' hell's sake. Okay. That can go there. And I'm also going to put RSSI voltage there as well. Find it. RSSI signal strength, top one. There we are. Oh, actually we're missing airspeed, which I think will be, here it is, airspeed. Airspeed, have we got ground speed? We can have that underneath it. Ground speed. 
Map under GPS. GPS speed. GPS ground speed. There we are. So that could go. I wish there was like a thing. Oh, is this something I can't line up? Ah, oh, I lined it up. There we are. So airspeed with GPS underneath. I like that. Couple of things that I do want to add on. Oh, direction to home. Um. Well, we've got the... I always used to love direction to home. On the FY21s, again, they had a direction to home arrow. They used to sit directly, be directly below the RC mode. So you know what? It means that we're getting the information twice, but in two different ways. But when you're, like, scrabbling and needing to come home quickly in an emergency, a direction arrow is brilliant. Let me... Boom! There we are. Um, so let's just have a look. Is there anything else that we want on here? Reference so manual flight time, craft name, craft name. We'll have that on. If I actually, should we leave it there ish? Yeah, we'll leave that there. System messages. I'm going to put there. Time of day RC source. Shows the current RC source to be useful when using MSP overdrive. I don't know what the fuck that means. Don't have any temperature centers. Not bother about Vario. Well, they're actually Vario. Might have Vario on. Why not? I don't want numeric Vario. Shows the vertical speed using a number. I love that. No, I like that. Oh. On time, flight time, got them combined. Pitch angle, roll angle. Not bothered about that. Yeah, not bothered about that. Plus code. Do you know what that is? Not bothered. H dot, what's this? Shows the horizontal. Dilution of precision from the GPS. The load of the actual GPS is okay. Let's go speed cruise heading error. Map up. Radar. VTX. PIDs and shit. And all them. Right. I'm going to save that. Because I am beyond happy with that. We have done a job. We could cross off OSD. Because I think that is. The FY41 setup. With all the extra stuff that that one can do. So. Crossed off. OSD. Um, there is the option for having multiple OSD modes. Um, which we can have a look into. Um, could that be interesting to have? Like a completely blank mode. You know. Possibly a um, reduced, like a reduced one, and then one with barely, you know, nothing on the screen. Um, that'd be useful. Um, you know, maybe one that's yeah, you know, as I say, re reduced things. And then one with maybe only system error messages uh, and the capacity of the battery that's left. Something like that. We're going to leave that for now. That's on the list as a question mark. So we don't have to do that. But it's something that we could have a look into.
Sorry about that. Right, so I'm going to stop recording now off the laptop. And if actually, no, let's have a look at flight mode, shall we? So I have got a battery. It's not the battery I'm going to use, but it has the right connector on. And I don't see it being a problem with it being a three cell, not a two cell, because so I think it can do a ridiculous amount of volts. Everything right. Red to red, yep. Doesn't help the blue heat shrink is at the end. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch one. Engine disabled. What the hell is happening here? We have some more issues that uh, I need to have a look into, so I'm probably going to swap to separate camera mode so I can explain what the hell is now happening that is confusing me so greatly. In fact, I'm also going to try and see if I can unplug this possibly somehow. Um, ah! Okay, so just to make this abundantly clear, um, the sort of information that I copied to set this up was for a drift. Yeah, for some reason, this is up elevator. So yeah, I'm very confused. <laughs> Let's just see, I wanna see on here what we've got set up for Arm is just switch F, which is this. Engines are. So we've Engine done that. Disabled. If I go into modes, I have saved that. Modes. Engines armed. Have at least Engine disabled. that being Engines sorted armed. out. Um. That is quite interesting. Um. So, first things first is I've got to work out why the hell these are doing what they are doing. So, mixer, airplane, what the piss. Okay, so, That's really fucking confusing. Well, I'll have to see how I wired this up and see if I could unwire it in some way. Um, back shortly. Okay, so the last clip that I recorded for you was at half past two. It's now nearly eight o'clock. That's how long it took me to reset the thing, get it set back up again, and all this other crapula that I've had to do. Um, but we are more or less done with the computer side of things. Obviously, things might need adjusting. All the flight modes are in, everything goes the right way, and all this other stuff. Um, set a few settings that are recommended. So, the way I've ended up, ended up getting this set up... Um, is if you imagine that this, these are the switches on the radio. So you've got the four on the front, ignore that one, scribbled it out. The four on the front, there, 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 and there. And then you've got the two on the back, there and there. There's one of them under the 2.4 aerial. I've been at this so long that actually the, the, I've had to change the battery in the radio. The battery that I was using in the plane is now so flat, I had to charge it as a NICAD for a little bit and then charge it as a LiPo to make it work. Be very careful. You basically want to charge this, if you do, if you charge this as a NICAD, 
be charging up to your charges at about 10.8 volts and take it off and ch uh, charge it as a normal lipo. Um, but one thing they have done is on the on-screen display, I've moved the, the, the model name because it would cut off at the top. It's now in the bottom left. So we have engine disarm and arm. Engines arm. Engine disabled. Which is actually the whole arm and disarm things. So that's just on channel 5. That's what that 5 means. For channel 6, we have OSD on and OSD off. Um, so that's just channel 6 on OSD switch in iNav. So it's on all the time unless I press and hold in this FPV. trainer switch. FPV. And whenever it's held in, the on screen display will go off so you can have a look at the ground. And as you can tell, the voice is just FPV to say that you've knocked something through the FPV. It doesn't have an off, it only says it when FPV. you push it on. Right, channel 7 is the stabilise mode. So we have manual, which I'm going to struggle to demonstrate for you. Hang on. Stabilisation on angle mode. Ignore all of that. So we have manual mode. manual mode, which is manual in the iNav and it's pass through mode on any older iNav tutorials you might be watching. So that is complete nest elevation. Every single output in here is passed straight through. Okay, we then have angle mode. Angle mode. Which all that does is, um, so that's stabilised and it will let, won't let you go past a certain angle. So it won't let you do loops and rolls, it'll get stuck at like 45 degrees. And then we have stabilisation on which is horizon mode. Now that will allow you to, um, it's stabilized, but it will let you do loops and rolls and things if you really want to. Now these next ones are a little bit interesting. So the next one is altitude hold, which is obviously holding the altitude um, that you're at. So we have it as off. Altitude hold, off. That's on the first two positions. And again, this is channel eight. And then the last position. Altitude hold on. Altitude hold on. So not only does it set channel 8 is just as normal, and that's configured in iNav to do whatever it needs to do. Another thing that it does, as you can see here, can I make this come right up? On everything that's to do with navigation, so that's altitude hold, autopilot, and direction hold or nav cruise. What it, I also have programmed in here is something that overrides channel 7, so it doesn't matter what switch this is in, which is the uh, Stabilization modes, it always puts it in the middle, angle mode. which is angle mode because it needs angle mode as like the base, and then these two sort of go on top of it, so that's what it's doing. So, again, altitude hold off up here, off. altitude hold on, Sorry. altitude hold off, altitude hold off again, altitude hold and on, altitude on, which also puts on angle mode. Now, for autopilot. Return to launch is down and on this switch because that's where it is on everything else. Everything will have return to launch that way on that switch so that in panic times we can do that. So, again, um, off is up here. Circle mode. Circle mode or position hold, which also sets that switch automatically to middle. And of course, return to launch. Which does the exact same thing. So, this is channel 9, return to launch, and have it set up in the radio to override channel. 7 to be in angle mode, it doesn't angle matter. Mode. Stabilization on angle mode. Technically that switch is, that's not right, but shush. Um, and again, this one is direction hold or nav cruise. So this is, if you're heading it to a heading of 180 degrees, it keeps it there. Now, attitude mode on. Attitude mode, is as I've called it. Um, is it used to be fixed attitude flight on the old FI-21, so it's easy for me to remember. So, that means that um, all that will happen attitude is mode off. Attitude mode off. so there's two off positions this switch can do Stabilization on whatever it likes mode. but when it's down here on. that has to be in the middle that will set that to the middle regardless of what the switch is on and return to launch overrides everything so it doesn't matter what these switches are in return to Circle launch return overrides to launch. everything Altitude hold off. So there should be no circumstances off. Off. where return to launch does not work. Now, what I am going to be doing is I need to set up failsafe at some point. So channel 11, which isn't going to be a physical switch or anything, but I'm going to set the radio. When failsafe, move channel 11 to the right. And when channel 11 is to the right, what's going to happen is that it is actually going to put... 
is going to override channel 7 or no when that's when channel 11 is on its on position it's going to have that in angle mode and return to launch on as well so i need to do that i'm going to put a circle around it but i'm going to leave it tonight because i say I've, I've been on it for like five hours and i'm fed up so um i thank you all very much for watching this video um i do have a, my list of stuff which uh so done a radio setup done flight controller setup done all screen display setup done gyro direction to radio direction I need to figure out the camera the cfg glue the antenna which i'm doing now so i can cross that off the list wherever the pen is there it is so I'm glue the antenna into the receiver antennas the prop fail safe uh, vtx channel i've done that and i need to do all the auto leveling stuff so that and that can go with this plane uh, but yeah i'm gonna leave it there thank you all for watching i'll see you all in the next one bye bye I just say like if you liked it, um, leave a comment if you have any questions at all, and depending on where you are, either subscribe or follow the page. Um, so yeah, I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.